Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Street Hockey Life. My name's Kyle, the host of this podcast, and uh, today I'm joined by a group of special people. Um, we got the coach of the, the U18 USA National Ball Hockey Team and three of, of the players that are uh, going to be making the trip to Slovakia come this summer. So um, really excited to have them on here. I thank them for, for doing that. And so first, let's do some introductions. Coach Eddie, we'll start with you. Hi, my name How is Eddie doing? Coster. I'm from uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. Uh, I've been coaching for a few years with these guys and uh, lucky to have them all <clears throat> and I'm excited to get them on the podcast. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Eddie. And then uh, we have Josh. Josh, tell us a little about, about yourself. I'm Josh Morin uh, from Cranberry, Pennsylvania. Started playing deck hawk when I was like six, seven years old um, at a YMCA, actually, in the gym. Uh Started doing in-house after that. Got into Screaming Eagles. Um, that organization was huge for me. Um, coaching was great. Met a lot of friends there. Really developed my hockey skill. And then U14 came around. That's when Coach Eddie reached out to me for USA for the first time. Um, just started to build from there. And then U14, U16. Now here we are, U18, getting ready to play in Slovakia. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks for joining, Josh. And uh, next up, we got Dominic. Uh, I'm Dominic Renebeck. Uh, I started playing ball hockey when I was about four, four or five. Uh, I, out of uh, Team Pittsburgh, uh, we're built basically uh, Brighton Heights in Pittsburgh. Uh, I mean, I, I know you guys are far away, so you probably don't know where that is. But uh, we, uh, I started playing when I was five, and I just fell in love with it. I, I wasn't really a huge fan of ice hockey because I was never good on my skates. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm playing both now, but I, ball hockey's always been my favorite. Um, I started uh, USA last year. Uh, I was the captain of the U16 team, and we uh, ended up winning a bronze medal. So uh, it was a very cool experience, and I'm really excited to go, go back to Europe and uh, hopefully do better than last time. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, th well, thank you again for being there. Appreciate it. And then last but not least, we have Dom. Uh, I'm Dom Tussie. I'm from New Jersey. I came playing out of the Gloucester Township Hockey Association. I started playing when I was six or seven. Uh, I always played ice growing up too, but I stopped playing a few years ago. Just enjoy street hockey better. It's just something I enjoy more. I met all my friends from it and awesome. fell in love with it ever since. Awesome. So tell me, guys, when, when it came to, you know, you guys have been playing mostly all your life, what type of training have you guys done? You know, not only like, you know, practicing, but like, is there off the rink training? Tell, tell us a little bit about what's gone into this to make you guys make a national team, because this is, this is a big deal. So um, the last was, part, uh, starting off the rink, um, a big thing that they look for is speed. I mean, the rink's huge. You got to be able to run it. So, like, you have your practices weekly, but if you're not trained on your own, like, running one, two miles every day, then you're not going to get faster to be able to keep up with that uh, that level of speed. Excellent. So, speed, training. Do you guys run long distance, too, or are you more sprint guys? Yeah, the, the biggest thing for me is the uh, – especially Czech Republic, They their guys are huge, long legs, so uh, they cover up a lot of space. So, my big thing is endurance. Uh if I can run for a long period of time, I think that'll help me majorly when I go over to Slovakia. So that brings up to that, and uh, did that brings up that sort of that next question is how big how big is the surface you guys will be playing in when you go over to Slovakia? What's the actual dimensions? If you know it, of course. I think it's, it's about one hundred eighty five feet. One hundred eighty five feet long, I think, is what it is. Yeah. Talked. We haven't got an exact, but <clears throat> from everything we've researched, it's about. 185 feet, 190 feet long. Okay. Is it 80 feet across or is it even bigger? Yeah. You know, no, between 80 and 90 feet. 80 and 90 feet. Okay. A lot of running. <laughs> a lot of running. So, and, and you guys, you know, we, down in New Jersey and Pittsburgh, what's the size of the rinks down there? They're a lot, they're a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, they, they are smaller. Yeah. That's small. Okay. Would you say they're like like the rink in Gloucester is one sixty by eighty? Eddie, what's yours down in Chuanzi? Uh, it's one sixty by eighty. 
it's 160 by eight. So uh, that's pretty much the dimension. So, <laughs> you know, that extra 15 feet, I'll tell you guys a quick story. Um, it's, it's just, this is a crazy turn of events for me personally. Um, when we built the rink and we were advocating for our rink in Gloucester, and I know Gloucester Township is different from New Jersey, so I have to remember that. I think, Eddie, didn't we play the Gloucester Panthers in Lemonster? Is that is that that? Yes, that's Same them, group? yeah. Okay. So story time with Kyle for a second. Um, when we launched the rink and when we were, you know, making publicity about our rink, the big thing that we push is hockey's for everyone because that's you, – you guys have heard this – all over USA ball hockey, you know, grow the game, the grassroots programs, get as many people to play. And so we launched a women's division. And so what ended up happening was um, we had started this adult pickup. We had two sessions, see how many guys want to come down and play. We ended up having a woman show up and then another woman came to another one. And they were like, you're going to have a women's division. I said, yes. And uh, when I when we started, the lady was like, "Well, what do you think?" And I'm thinking, I'm like, "Well, it's probably going to be pickup hockey. We'll just throw six in the middle, and then off we go, right?" And at the time, my wife Erin was not playing. Uh, she was like, "I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't want to do that." And then finally, she came around to it after I told her that some people were asking if she was going to play. She said, "All right, I'll give it a try." So in week one that we had, um, we had 14 women total, and literally threw sticks in the middle, threw sticks out. Next thing you know, the next week we had like 25 women. And then by the end of the summer, we had 46 women playing. And they, we had split them up into two teams. They had jerseys. Huge rivalry was forming. And it just, it kind of, it just took off so quickly. But the reason why I'm sharing this with you is our, my wife said, I, I'd like to do some tournaments. So I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, and the first, first tournament we went to was Lemonster. We went, we were invited out, out there to the Can-Ams. We did okay there. We lost every game, but the women did fine. And then we went to the UW. You guys familiar with UW playing United Women's Ball Hockey Foundation? They have a tournament in Tiverton, Rhode Island, which is actually down by Eddie. Eddie knows where where this is. It's a huge rink. It's 190 feet long. So our women were so gassed, you know, playing on that surface, and they're like, "That was way too big." But I was like, you know, you guys can sometimes play in a full ice rink, 200 feet, and. It, it's a ton of running. So anyway, there's a long-winded story about how in Timberton, if you guys ever come up this way, I know, Eddie, you've been there, right? In that yeah, we actually, our last camp before we head overseas this summer is in Timberton. It's in Timberton. Okay. It, <laughs> yeah. It's a big, it, it will get you ready because it, it looks like it was designed for roller hockey but, or inline hockey, and but it's a beautiful facility. I have, uh, you know, you guys, it, it, it will get you ready for that. So so anyway, other than, other than distance, um, Eddie, I would just want to ask you this quickly. How... Like, how do you guys go about picking a team? What's your staff consist of, et cetera? Uh, so I have a great staff. Um, I have our general manager is Mike Batista. Our assistant general manager is um, George Bissett. And then assistant coaches are Tony Carrero and uh, Willie um, McKean. Uh, so we have a great staff. We've been the staff for since the U14 team. So... Um, I want to say that was six years ago now, 2018, I believe we started and kind of COVID kind of messed everything up. But in the beginning, we did a, <clears throat> we did a tournament and um, we went around the country. We spent a lot of our own money and we went to do all kinds of different tournaments and we reached out to these kids um, and invited them to a tournament in July in Fall River, oh, well, Swansea. Swansea. Um, and we had a tournament. So I got all the best players in the country. I think there was about 80 of them. That came from all over the country. We separated them into separate teams. How uh, we saw how we thought it would work out, and uh, we had the Saturday was at my rink in Swansea, and the Sunday was actually in Tiverton. Um, so we got to see two different styles of hockey, and um, that was the first time. And then after that, it was more of a let's have some regional tryouts. Um, we, we do a lot of legwork. Everybody kind of does it different, but we do a lot of. Uh, studying we do a lot of um just research on the players on top mm, of interesting. watching them play at tournaments we spend a lot of time at tournaments even if we're not having a team there we would fly there and and watch um and now with the nbhl the, the best thing in ball hockey really um yeah you can watch these guys play so 16 17 18 year olds are playing all the games are recorded they're all online um so the nbhl is such a great tool for all coaches who want to look for the best players that must make it so much easier to be able to evaluate a player from uh, because because all nbhl games are recorded you have a boatload of film that you can review that 
Mason, do you watch yeah. film with the other staff members or is it more you guys watch it on your own, take notes and then come together or? Yeah, a little of both. Uh, it's, it's hard to get everybody to come together to watch something. And I feel like when you watch something together, opinions probably blend together. Um, okay. So I like when guys watch it separately, make their own opinion on something and, and just bring it to me. Um, That's smart. And then we, smart we make a decision together. Um, that way, my voice or someone else's voice doesn't, you know, change your opinion on something. I want your opinion, you know. So that's, that's a great. Kind of that's the way a great we've thing. done it. But we've always time. we've always been very fair. I think one of the things in ball hockey is it's hard. Is a lot of guys can't separate their love for a player from how good they are. So you know, whether it's your son, your nephew, a kid you've coach for years this is the usa team and you got to pick the top 20 to 22 guys my son's tried out every year since u14 and every year he gets cut it's nothing personal obviously Hard. but if you're going to do this you got to do it the right way absolutely absolutely so so for you guys when you guys when was the camp what? our first camp was in what was it november thanksgiving weekend yep. yeah Okay, so of last year, what do you guys do to prepare for that tryout? I mean, it must be exciting to get the call from the from first from one of the U.S. national coaches to say, "Hey, come to the camp." But what what do you guys do to say mentally and physically get ready for that camp? Um, first mentally, we've got a playbook with tons of plays in it, so I'm looking through that to make sure <laughs> off the breakouts, make sure I'm prepared for that, and then physically, you know, maybe in the gym two three times a week, working on legs, running again. Um, whenever we've got like practices for club teams and stuff like that, making sure I'm like doing every rep as hard as I can, uh, just make sure I'm making the best, making the most of my time whenever I'm on the rank. Awesome. Awesome. Tom, for me, it was, it was a lot of, uh, positional work. Like I lucky enough to either have a deck, literally I could walk there and it takes two minutes. So it's really nice, but, um, it's not it's not the greatest desk, deck, but I mean it works. So I go out and I you know set up bags on the blue line. I make stretch passes, you know shots from wherever, just working on the shot, working on my passes, stuff like that. And obviously, like Josh said, running. Uh, I'm I'm big into lifting. I uh, so a lot of lifting, and even though I when it comes down to it, like maybe I usually stop like three months before and try to work on conditioning only, like running. Because you don't want to get too big over there and where you slow down, you know what I mean? Interesting. Interesting. They, they, uh, obviously, the playbook work. A lot of people have skill, but you just got to put it to use. You got to know what you're doing with the playbook. It's how you build chemistry and stuff. So I would say that's a big thing. And then getting in the gym and working on cardio is also huge. Got to have your cardio up and stuff. Do you guys feel like when you play, this is kind of an international versus home question. So like when you guys are playing at home, your travel club teams, even in your house leagues, and then you go play international, do you feel like there's a big difference in style? Like w one is more physical, the other one is more running. Um, I feel like the biggest difference is the team play. Whenever we're playing at home, like certain guys can just take over games. But over there, everybody's got equal skill. It's about how you use your line mates, um, how you listen to your coaching staff, and how you be able to like, can adjust on the fly so that you can beat your team that you're playing against. Yeah, to follow up on that, like like you said, like there's so many guys with so much talent. You just you need to work well with your teammates. Like it's not so much about you know my uh, my dad. He always brings up like you know Beaver. You might have one kid. Uh, you know, when you're when you're in a younger age, you might have one kid that could take over a game. When you're at our age, it, it's the whole team. It doesn't it doesn't matter how good you are. You got to put it to use. Yeah. <clears throat> how about the physicality of the sport? This has been something that has been interesting. I mean, I I've, I've obviously been to. Um, I haven't been around as much as you guys. That's sure. But like, I I did play the NBHL last year in Tier Three in Boston. And um, I can tell you guys this. I just turned 40 a couple weeks ago. So I'm getting up there. It feels like every day it feels a little worse. But um, I just remember we played on Tuesday nights in Boston. The Wednesday mornings, I wake up, I would just feel like I went through a, you know, got hit by a train sometimes. But what's the physicality like, you know, 
on your travel club teams versus when you go play like a Canadian team or, or even the Slovaks? Um, never playing for like our travel club teams. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'll have a weekend of tournaments. I mean, I'll look at my back afterward. Balance. <laughs> I've got stick marks just up and down it. Um, there's a lot of stick work here at home, but you get overseas. It's more getting low in positioning. Um, I know with the officiating over there, the stick work like, you got called for penalties all the time. So you had to make sure that you were lower than your the other guy. Make sure you push him out. Because once you like extend it or hit them with your stick, you're going to go to the box. So just Got really it. getting body positioning and making sure you stay low is the biggest difference between at home and being ever seen. Yeah, at home you could get a, you could get away with a lot of like you know like even slashes. Sometimes they let them go, but like over there, I mean, one little slash and you're in the box. It's a lot of it's a lot of you know uh, bodying up, pinning stuff like that. It's not so much stick lifts you know what i mean mm -hmm, sure <laughs> sure even sure. going from 16 u to 18 u that two-year gap the phys like it just gets way more physical as you like as we all get bigger and stuff yeah i can i can only imagine what if you guys if you guys could um in your own words you know there's probably a chipmunk out there a penguin out there even beavers that what does it take to get to your level, guys? Like, what type of sacrifices, things like this? Um, Maybe not a lot. Biggest thing for me is whenever I was younger, um, I definitely wasn't the fastest kid, wasn't the most agile. Um, I really had to work to get to where I'm at, I am now. Um, I mean, that just took constant effort every single day, every other week. Uh, you just can't give up on it because your time's going to come eventually. And if you think that's going to be too hard, the road's going to be too long, and you give up on yourself, then you're never going to go anywhere. If you keep trying, eventually some like, loophole is going to open up for you, and then take advantage of your opportunity and just go for it. Well said. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's all about effort. Um, you know, I, 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 if, I was, well, if I was coaching, I'd rather a kid that gives 100% than one that gives 60, but he's better at playing hockey. Like, I, you want the kids that are going to work hard and, you know what I mean, not – not the kids that are gonna slack off. <laughs> yeah, I th I think it starts with like the love for the game. You gotta enjoy it. Gotcha. That's what it starts with, and then you just gotta build from there. Just keep going. Don't stop. Absolutely, passions. Bas passions a big thing. Which it's hard to coach that that type of. But you guys are talking about the effort piece. That's a huge piece. Um, uh, right. Actually, do a lot of reading, guys, on mental toughness and things like this. I'm a big. If you guys know David Goggins, I'm a. I, you know, um, I like following him. I like his messages. So, um, I do believe in a lot of efforts. So that's great to hear you guys reiterate that. So it's it's funny. You got both of you guys. One of you, both of you mentioned the playbook. How big is the playbook? Now I'm, I'm curious. Oh, in my playbook. I'm assuming probably 30, 40 sheets. You've got papers, <laughs> notes. Um, you've got like little cups that we put our papers in to make sure they don't get ruined. Awesome. Camp, make sure we're going over it. Awesome. Is this given by Coach Eddie or is this from someone else? No, he doesn't give it. He just uh, okay. plays okay. on. We got it right ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. Well, that's great, you guys. That's awesome. And and Eddie, do you guys have a playbook that you guys go over? Or how does that work? Like, yeah, so we have we have a system, right? So when people think plays, they think like NFL, like you're gonna. Sure. It, it's a little different, right? It's, it's a little it's, different, right? It's it's like a defensive zone system. Um, nice. It starts in your D zone. It works out through your neutral zone, into your offensive zone, back out to your neutral zone, back into your defensive zone, um, and then there's set face off plays. That's about you know the, the set plays are probably on your face offs, and I love set plays, and we probably have fifteen to twenty of them. Wow. Um, which sounds wow. like a lot, but what we're what, as a staff, what we're trying to do is every time the other team thinks they figured out what we have done and they adjust to it, we have another game plan. We have another breakout. We have another four check. We have a you know, and if they can't stop it, well, we'll keep doing the same thing. But once they stop it, you have to have something else, right? Um, and the second they think they figured out your favorite face off play. Well, we're baiting you into something else, right? Love it. You, you think you got us? Well, we're going to bait you into this. Um, so, yeah, we, we spend a, I spend a lot of time on, on what I believe is a good system. Again, the system, a good coach builds a system based on what he has for, te for a team, right? He don't, 
he don't come to a team with a system. He has to see what he has. Um, luckily, when you pick the USA team, you you can pick the guys you want. So, um, and these guys are amazing. These guys are all top twenty. Um, this team in particular is probably the most talented team I've ever coached. Um, they just they they can do anything, and they're fast. They're big. They're strong. Um, but yeah, the system is is important. You know, and we, we preach it because, again, once somebody figures you out, you got to be able to change it up. This, this is kind of a big um, overview of USA ball hockey with the with the national teams. Does everybody play the same system, or do you have the autonomy to say, "Hey, I'm going to add certain things in"? Does that does that make sense? Like you have the yeah, autonomy no, to no. Build? So, so Corey Hirsch is great. Like if he selects you to be a coach, like you do your thing. He's okay. there to help you. Um, if you want to be up till three o'clock in the morning with him, he'll be up at three <laughs> o'clock in the morning with you, right? Sure. He'll break out the whiteboard and go over stuff with you. He'll debate you on stuff, which is what a coach wants, right? Sure. Um, but no, he's never once said you have to do this, have to do that. Yeah. Every team is different, right? My my team is strong and fast, and maybe you know you got the U twenties that might be just something else. You know, they, the best players might be a different system, or the coach might believe in something different. So yeah, no. Corey does a great job of trusting his guys, and uh, but also being there for him and giving him a, in a, an outside opinion. Absolutely, that's great. I ju- I was just curious. Um, I've had uh, this conversation with uh, one of the local football coaches saying he wanted to have, and this is football, so it's very different. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to compare the two. Is that from the high school level all the way down to pee wee football? the kids would just have the same system all the way through. So when they get to high school, it's like second nature, but I like autonomy. I like creativity. So I'm, I, I, was just curious. I think you even know. in football though, even in football, no, I never how, do you have the same, how do you have the same system if you don't get the same players, right? That's a, a fair great, point. A great coach has to tailor the system <laughs> to his players or he's failing them. So what, what do you, and speaking of that, what do you think the strengths of this U18 team will be? That a might lot. be a hard question. Um, they commit first of all. They committed. They they all work super hard. Uh, the talent is through the roof. But um, I I think more than anything that they want to win. They want to win as much as I want to win. Um, they'll do what it takes to win, and they they're, they're coachable. You know that none of them think like, oh, I'm really good, so I don't need to be coached. No, they they know they need to be coached. They take coaching well, um, and, and when. You know, when they're asked to do something, they do it. That's that's great, really excellent. I mean, just from talking, listening to you guys talk, the the maturity is is excellent. Um, it's you, you guys are in your class of your own, really. So, with that said, you guys, can you tell me a little bit about you? You go to the first tryout camp, and then what happens from there? That's for any one of you. Oh, um, basically, oh wait, Josh, you got it. You can go, <laughs> Good. All right, uh. Obviously, if you do good, uh, you'll get the call, make the team, then just got to start preparing for the first camp. And then from there on out, it's just a process. Obviously, learn the playbook, learn your teammates, build some chemistry, and then look forward to the summer. Yeah, we, we were talking before it started is like how fast everything goes. Um, it's extremely insane. Like, I, I thought I tried out last month, and I mean, we're <laughs> three months into. Uh, since our last camp, like it's unbelievable how fast it goes. Um, so you you know you you all I I've been preparing since the first month I got picked. So yeah, yeah. The team comes out fairly shortly after tryouts, and then like right away we've got a group chat on Snapchat going. We're already messing around there, getting to know each other. Like team bonding starts the second that team comes out. And that's important overseas because you got to be able to play with the guys you're going over with. Awesome. So this this is a question again that's going to relate to what to what you just said, Josh. Is what's the chemistry like for your team? Where you guys you guys have obviously you might come across each other in travel tournaments, but like you got the Mass guys, you got the New Jersey guys, you got the Pennsylvania. What what's that like for you guys? How does it come together? Yeah, I know. I mean, I played against these guys all the time in like local tournaments. I mean, me and Dom in Pittsburgh, we <laughs> like to beat each other up together, and then you know after. <laughs> We're just hanging out, best friends, messing around. Um, we have like what four or five guys from every different area just coming together, and I mean it's really important to get to know them, 
Um, we do tons of small area games in practice, which is important because you're going to know where guys are going to be. Um, they'll start talking. You know where they're going to be at. Um, and that's just important to start meshing as soon as possible. That's only going to help you later on. Yeah, versus each other club teams, uh, how can I put this? Like, we're playing each other, but as soon as we step foot on the rink, it's like we're not friends until after the game, which <laughs> we are as well. But, you know, once the game's done, it's yeah. – That's how it goes. Yeah. I shouldn't say ask this question, but I will. <laughs> are there is there any group of guys that is just they're more difficult to get along with? Uh, Sorry, putting you guys on the spot now. I honestly, I, 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 I really say, don't think. No, I don't no. think. There's a few uh, guys who are tighter for sure, yeah. but all easy to get along with. Okay. We yeah, make a real we, we make a real effort at camp. Like we, we'll have camp from eight to four. They have to be together the whole time. And then after that, camp's not done. Like, you go home, or you go home, you go to a hotel, you get two hours to wash up, and then you're downstairs in the lobby. And we either go we go bowling. I mean, we've done a bunch of different things, right? Um, I force them to be together till probably at least 10 o'clock at night. Um, but when I say I force them, I, I don't really have to force <laughs> them at this point, right? Sure. They, they sure. all kind of hang out. And, uh, you know, you're not going to love everybody, but – but my rule is you're gonna respect everybody, and um, and but I, I would honestly say that we we probably have I don't know maybe say ten or twelve of the same kids that started at U14, so there's a real good bond there, and they do a great job, and I lean on them to take these new guys in and make them feel a part of of this family. That's what it is. But we're, we're we're family, and along the way we've had to cut some guys because it's a national team, right? Some guys just don't progress, but uh, or just missed out, and we're not going to keep you just because you've been there. But I'd say like 10 or 12 of these guys have been there from the beginning, and um, mm -hmm. that helps. And we've been together, like I said, six years. So when you get new guys, these guys, I can't tell you how excellent they are at pulling guys in. Um, Dom, and, Dom and Josh have been with me since they were 14, and, and Dom the year after, I think, you 16. Uh, yeah. So we've been together a long, a long time, and these guys just do an excellent job of pulling everybody together. That's awesome. That's awesome. That, that, that's that's really that's pretty special, guys. Really, um, I, I envy the. Uh, I hope that one day I can our travel teams will come together and we'll be able to do some of this fun stuff. You know, um, you know, and I I wrote an article about a year and a half ago when the rink was just going to be finished, and I said I hope that one day there'll be a player that comes to our program that gets to the level that you guys are at. So uh, who knows? There's probably a few that are <laughs> close, but I don't know. You think so. And then you get the guy out there, like I got Drake and he drives you nuts all the time. <laughs> got it. <laughs> and he's going to listen to this and say, Oh, that's messed up. No, we, 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 we got a couple, I got a couple homegrown guys and I'm probably hotter that's on them awesome. than anybody. That's awesome. That that kind of reminds me, Eddie, where, you know, I, this is for the boys as well with the players is that have you guys, did you guys play in that Future Stars event? Because uh, forgive me, I don't know your ages that well. So did you guys play in it? What was that experience for you? Yeah, yeah. we played the Future Stars tournament. Um, actually, me and Dom were D partners together that. Um, it was a great experience. I mean, it was similar to USA, like how it was set up. We had our camps and then we all got together for that tournament in New York. Um, great rank, great game. Uh, we actually, we played Coach Eddie's team in the championship game. We're not going to talk about how that ended. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was, that was, the, it was, was it good. triple overtime? Triple, triple overtime. overtime. Right? I was, I was there, boys, for that one. I was up coming <laughs> out with that tournament. I, I mean, I, I'm so impressed with that tournament because I think you guys, that gives you an advantage ahead of time, right? You're mixing with the mass guys, the New York guys, you know, uh, guys you don't get to see all the time. That can really bond you guys right there. That's a, that's a great tournament. Um, I, I'm looking forward to going back at some point. I, um, unfortunately, right now they moved it. Right, Eddie, isn't it earlier in the? It, yeah, it's, it's a little a, earlier. It's in August. August now. Okay. It's a, a five day tournament, and just a little plug: we will have our tryouts for uh, Team Mass uh, okay. first week of March. There we go. They'll be coming out this week. <laughs> good, to, good to know. Good to know. I might have a, some, some guys for you. Maybe we'll awesome. see. Awesome. Um, we want to hear. At least, at least get down there and try it. Um, yeah. I, I love the chemistry talk, guys. I mean, I. 
my wife will send me these reels of kids playing uh, hockey in the hotels. You guys might play knee hockey. Uh, we used to do that all the time in, when I played ice hockey in the travel. But it, ball hockey is such a special community at the end of the day. You guys do a great job. Um, you know, grow, you know, especially you, Eddie, you know, coaching these kids. I mean, role models too. And is there a little bit of um, – I guess mentorship from the U18 down to the 16 team. Is there any, is there any mixing that goes on during the, those time periods or not necessarily? Um, I would say the younger kids, like especially the few New Jersey kids that I know that are on the U16s, they definitely like look up to me and the other older boys. So just set an example for them. Yeah. And then obviously they're a little younger, more mature. So they fool around a little bit, but you just got to keep them. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To build off of uh, what Dom just said, our last camp, we had camp with the U16 team and we would mesh together. We scrimmage them at the end and that only pushes each other to do better. Um, we get to know them a little bit because we're going to be overseas with them. So might as well get to know them, cheer each other on. Yeah. Cool. Last year was a little tough because we had, I want to say, we had the 16s, 18s, 20s, 23s, and the women's. Uh, age group we were all up in the Czech Republic I mean 18s and uh uh women's they were they were I think a week later I want to say um but anyway uh it was a little tough you know you're playing a game and then you got to get right off and you, maybe another U.S. 18s playing this time we're only going up with just us in the U16s so it's going to be nicer get off the rink go cheer them on um sure two teams it's it'd be way easier <clears throat> excellent what's the what's the best thing what's the best thing about playing over in Europe for you guys, so it's just something that really sticks out. I, I I just like meeting all the people. I mean, half of them don't speak English, but it's still cool just to just to you know. I mean, you you don't get this experience. Not a lot of people get this experience, so try to make the most of it. Uh, meet new people. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is the food, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, yeah. so, same for you guys, Josh, Dom, food. Uh, okay. I mean, it's a great experience. I mean, I'm the exact opposite of Dom. I love the food there. I thought it was a great <laughs> um, Love going out to eat. Uh, another big thing, though, after the tournament was over, like people were exchanging jerseys and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Um, the teams were talking to each other. You couldn't understand them. It was like, talk on your jersey, <laughs> off your back, switch yeah. it with like the Czech players or Canadian players, and then go from there. So just get to create bonds on and off the rink with a bunch of different people. And the awesome. environment. Like you're playing in front of people from different countries all over the world. You know, that's like mm. that much better than that. That's awesome. That's really that's really cool. I'll share this with you. I can I can relate to Dominic's comment. Um, my senior year of high school, for some reason, I went to prep school and played prep hockey. And for some reason, our team decided to go to Russia over Thanksgiving break. And in prep school, you get the whole week of vacation off. So you just you don't it's not like public school where you have a couple of days. So we flew to Russia and we played in a, in a Trechiak Cup, which is, if you guys know Trechiak, he was the goalie for 1980, the USSR team, and it was his tournament. And we got our butts kicked by these two Russian teams. Like they were just, I mean, these they, this was their national team. So they kicked our butt right up, right up and down the ice. But anyway, the reason why I bring this up is, guess where we ate every single meal? I kid you guys not, every single meal. McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they gave us a coupon. I wish I had one. And I, you know, the, we, we'd have these two women, these two translators that went everywhere with us. They had to because we couldn't speak any, any Russian. And, uh, you know, you go in and I think I got, I think I ate chicken McNuggets and a chicken sandwich the whole time while I was there. Mm -hmm. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was, that was all we ate. So, um, but it was like, like I can relate to you guys traveling abroad. It was a lot of fun. And, um, so, so that, and that brings us to the competition itself. Who's other than you guys? Who do you guys think is going to be tough competition over there? And and tell us a little bit about what you, usually who's giving you the biggest fits. Um, I know last year, I think our biggest competition was Canada. I mean, they just played a very systematic game. Um, in the offensive zone, I mean, they used each other so well, passing the ball around, and then we just couldn't get lost in the defensive zone. Um, I know some of the other teams like Slovakia and Czech, it was more off the rush type teams. Um, so we have to be able to play both games, obviously, play systematic, play off the rush, which I think we're, if we know that in advance, we can prepare for it. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. Just every team plays a different style there. So you got to adjust. 
Yeah, like Josh said, like there's so many different styles of hockey. Uh, the Europe, they're so used to running. So they, you know, it's more of a dump and chase kind of team. And then you got Canada who, Canada always has good hockey teams. So you got to adjust to them. And it's it's all about styles, adjusting, all kind, all that stuff. Excellent. Yeah, I agree with what both of them said. Yeah. Different styles. That's that's really interesting. Now, I don't know all the countries that will be there. Do you guys, can you list, list them off? Um, I know Canada yeah. and you guys, but Slovakia. Slovakia, Czech, Canada. I know, is Great Britain thrown in the team? Great Britain. Yeah, but so, right. Switzerland? Is that Switzerland, it? yeah. How about Finland? I don't think, no. I don't think Finland. Okay. Yeah, I think it's six or seven teams, from what I understand. And how will the tournament be set up? Will you guys do round robin, then pl playoff, uh, tournament playoffs? How does that look? What does that look like? I think you pretty much play everybody. Oh, you get three three or four prelim games. Well, not prelim, but pre-playoff games. You get seeded, and then from there you go to the playoffs. Um, you get – the way it worked last time was you have one day that you have two games, the rest – you had one, and then obviously playoffs. It'll depend. It'll be a little different this time, but um, yeah, you pretty much. I think you get four preliminary games and then playoffs. Playoffs. When you go from the preliminaries to the to the playoffs, is there a big jump, or do you feel like the cocky stays consistent over the over the course of the tournament? Um, I feel like the competition. I mean, it's high right off the bat, but once you hit playoffs, I mean, it jumps up another ramp. Uh, I mean, that's, that's undescribable. I mean, the fans are into it, too. I mean, the noise. Whenever we played Czech, I mean, those fans had drums. They had microphones. I mean, it was loud in there. I mean, <laughs> it just gets higher and higher as you get further on in the tournament. Yeah, the, it's the, lots of lots of sounds. I mean, I remember playing Slovakia in the bronze medal game last year, and the fans were like nothing I've ever seen before. It's, it was unbelievable. Like, drums going, screaming everywhere. I mean... Uh, yeah, just a lot of noise. Lots of noise. <laughs> Sounds fun. Atmosphere is like the main thing. It's awesome. It's awesome. The atmosphere. Yeah. How many how many people are at these games? Do you know well, that? I mean there the where we were at, there were uh there were we had one venue that had two rinks inside, so it was kind of hard to judge. Uh and then there was another rink where uh, I don't, I don't, you guys didn't get to play on that, did you? The, no, no, it was like, it was, it was, it was a bigger rink and it was, uh, the, like the stands and everything were large. Uh, so over there is a lot of seating, but the ones we were at, I'd say, I mean, anywhere from one to one fifty. The amount of people that it's fun. Uh, it sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, I, I could I could be wrong. It, it's just how I thought. It's a <laughs> no. I think I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. So, whenever we, so uh, time, whenever sorry. fans were like overhead a little bit, so they're right above our benches. You look up above the bench, <laughs> and it was just like packed with. I mean, flags hanging over, uh, just people crowded. So I mean, you could hear the noise right over your head as you were playing. Awesome, what, Eddie. This might be more for you. Is is are there any plans to have these tournaments play be played in the United States at some point, or um, I, I think so. I think uh, again, Cor Cor Corey's working hard um, to show those countries that what we do is is top notch. Um, I do think it's a little easier for Americans and Canadians to maybe head over to Europe. Um, mm -hmm. We have a more more disposable income, I guess you could say. Sure. Um, sure. So I think it's easier to go there, but but I I do think what the ISBHF is doing is is trying to to grow it and, and get to a point where maybe the youth games come here. I just I think that's more based on economy than you know than than anything else. You know. It's easy. Yeah. We're lucky to live in this country, and Canada Absolutely. is lucky to live in their country, and um, you know the disposable income is is, is much much higher here. True, true. I mean, I was, um, you know, one of the things, guys, that I was a part of very briefly as a spectator more than anything is that the um, they had that global summit 
for the women, um, for the masters that I guess they only had three teams that came over. So, um, I think that was part of the, part of the conversation was the money part of it. It's, it's, it's not easy. So, um, I did want to, I did want to ask you guys, cause I, I trying to get the timeline is, is the team is basically picked in November. For us, it's earlier for us. It's, it's earlier yeah, for us. It, every team is a little different. Uh, I'm not a very patient person and I, <laughs> and I want to, uh, yeah. Get the team together, not not rush to pick it, but I feel as though you need like ten or eleven months to not only train but give these parents the opportunity to plan to go to Europe, right? So um, I think I think we were picked by probably September. September. Um, and what we do is we'll leave ourselves a few spots, and then then at November camp we um, we bring some guys back for a second look, mm -hmm. um, and then finalize it from there. So, and then from November, when's the next camp? Then our next camp is is March. Um, so, so it's March. Here it comes. Okay, right. It, it's a, it's a nice hockey world, right? And we're all living in it. So, right after Thanksgiving, it's ice hockey time for myself. I mean, I coach Massachusetts high school hockey, and when I get back from camp on the Monday, it's every single day, and I'll, I'll be wrapping up in probably two or three weeks mm -hmm. with the state tournament, and then. This time to get back to to ball hockey, you know, and all of these guys, not all of them, but a lot of these guys are high level ice hockey guys. So it's tough to ask them to leave their ice hockey teams from November to, to March, you know. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Dominic, Dom and Josh, I mean, are you guys ice hockey players? I, I Forgive me. I kind of forgot a little bit already. So I apologize. But if you just refresh my, my memory. Yeah, I play for two teams. I play both club and for my school. So mm -hmm. that's I'm on the ice four or five times a week. Yeah, I I only play school. Uh, I never really got in. I I was never really a huge fan of ice hockey. That's uh, quite all right. I used to play club and school, but like I said, I stopped playing ice hockey two years ago just because I enjoyed deck more. But it gets mm -hmm. so it, the commitment is a different level. Do you guys do you guys feel like ice hockey has helped you be better ball hockey players, in, or vice versa? Vice yeah, vice vice versa. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, when you like, like, I always thought of it as I got my hands, skills, like stuff like that on the deck. And it's kind of funny because my skating was never there. If I was a better skater, I'd, I'd be way better at ice. But I mean, I, like I have the skill set to be good at ice. I just, I'm not the greatest skater. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Building off what he said, I started deck hockey first. I didn't pick up ice hockey until like <laughs> 10 years old. I mean, I was doing learn to skate at 10 years mm -hmm. old with four-year-olds. But if it wasn't for, like, my coaches at the Screaming Eagles, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today with both ice hockey and deck hockey. I mean, they really built my foundation. And then after that, I mean, both ice hockey and deck hockey helped me build my – they built in my hockey career, but deck really started it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, okay. I feel like uh, ball hockey also uh, – you learn positioning more in ball hockey than ice, and it translate, translates both ways. So, yeah. That's just <laughs> I had a parent tell me that actually about his kid learning ball hockey with, with us this past uh, year. He feels like his positioning has gotten better. That's interesting you say that. Um, I, you know, I, I shared this guy's either offline was that, you know, growing up here in Gloucester, we didn't have a deck rink. Uh, we didn't have ball hockey rink, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to call it. I spent so many hours, uh, you know, in my grandmother's driveway shooting <laughs> whatever we could find in those days. It was either a Milik ball, golf balls. It was you know, with these blades that were like this big. And, you know, I, I truly believe that my stick handling came a long way just from playing street hockey. And I wish, I wish I had the experience that you guys, um, you guys had, it sounds like a one hell of a journey you guys have. And what I want, you know, people to know is that, you know, coach Eddie already knows this. You three are just, you guys are three players that are on it, but to make a national team takes a hell of a lot of commitment, time, sacrifice, and effort and if there's anything that I can preach to anybody is you guys are, you know, you're the exception. You know what I mean? It, it takes a lot of hard work to get to where you are. And also going to throw in your parents and your siblings, right? I mean, they sacrifice a lot of time and effort. But what's your, what's your sort of message to kids where, you know, they might be struggling to get better? Do you guys have any advice, any encouragement to give them? It's kind of a... I mean, that's where it's hard. Because like, building off what I said before, like, you have to have your individual effort. 
but I mean, it really takes a community to get you there. Um, if you don't have the coaching staff, if you don't have like even your teammates just to push you, if I didn't have the teammates that I have that push me to be better every single practice, then I wouldn't have pushed myself as hard. Um, mm -hmm. Like effort, your, your own effort really gets you so far, and then you need coaching, friends, and they'll push you the rest of the way. Great point. Yeah, you you can't give up. It's a lot about individual effort. Um, you know, go like I said, there's a rink right by me. It's perfect. Even if you don't have that opportunity, get a parent to drive you somewhere. Go stick handle for an hour or two. Go in front of your television, stick handle. Um, I mean, it's just learn the fundamentals and everything will come together. Yeah, awesome. same. Hey, I grew up like any free time I had, I would go shoot, go stick handle, play with friends. Uh, I feel like the best way to get better is. Like I said earlier, you just have to have love for it. You got to enjoy doing it. Find a passion. Absolutely. That's awesome, guys, really. Now, Eddie mentioned it. That's always money. We're all disposable income, et cetera. How do you guys raise money? What can we do to help you guys? Uh, um, it depends. Um, so every family does it a little different. Uh, I think right now these guys are doing um, – some guys are doing Super Bowl squares. Mm -hmm. They did do like uh, it wasn't a GoFundMe, but it was like a um, it was close to a GoFundMe. They they sent out things and people donated money for them. Um, I think right now they're doing a raffle. Uh, is the raffle still going on? I'm not sure if you guys are still selling the raffle tickets. Uh, I know a few years ago we uh, sold bracelets. Yeah, nice. yeah, we it, it's small things. It's it's we we've always tried to <clears throat> do things that um, people want instead of just you know asking for um but more than anything just you know i think these guys will tell you that they, the support you know watching their games um getting on there and, and cheering them on and and like this this event that we're throwing in march you know when we well, it's gonna be live streamed um get on there and watch it support them you know uh, i think that's the biggest thing you can do for them that's awesome. So this 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 uh, this next camp is March sixteenth and seventeenth. I'm going to butcher this again, even though we talked about it. Sewell, New Jersey. I want to say Seawell, so bad, but Sewell, New Jersey, and the U eight the U eighteen team is going to be playing four NBHL teams. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we we threw an open challenge out to NBHL New Jersey to <laughs> scrimmage us. Um, we want to play the best of the best, and the NBHL is the best thing going in ball hockey. So why not play some Tier 1 teams? And uh, luckily enough, we got four teams to play us, and those rosters are loaded with guys who are either former USA players, current USA players, some junior USA players. Um, these games are going to be difficult. Um, we're going to play <laughs> We're going to play the Dogs, the Hawks, uh, the Caribou. And the uh, what is it, Dom? What are they called again? The Tortigas. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, these guys are loaded, um, and they're not going to take it easy. And that and that's what we're looking for. And and it's going to be a great event. It's going to be live streamed. We're going to have announcers. Um, it, it's it's going to be awesome. The NBHL is doing this new Monday night hockey thing, and uh, this is going to be their first attempt at running that that show, basically with us in March and we're, we're honored to, to be a part of it. Awesome. Uh, it's just such That's a awesome. great thing. So Eddie, that, that camp then will you guys have like in between these games, will you guys be doing, you know, bonding idea, you know, bonding stuff? Will you guys be practicing? What, what does that camp look like? Yeah. So that basically they'll show up at 8am on Saturday and um, we'll do some walkthrough stuff. We'll talk playbook. Um, we won't run them as much as we normally do. Normally, the first day of camp is pretty grueling. We try yeah. to see where everybody's in shape, but we'll do some walkthrough stuff, some battle drills, just get them going, and then uh, we'll play that first game. We'll, well, first of all, we'll have a game plan of what we want to do, right? Um, and then we will play our first game. They'll get a little break in between games, and um, we'll review some of the game and uh, talk about the game plan and see what went well, what didn't go well. We'll have another walkthrough, install a different game plan, um, play the second game, 
Again, that game will be done. They'll get a little break. We'll do a little walkthrough on the rink, and then they'll they'll get back to the hotel. They'll have two hours to themselves, and then it'll be a lot of bonding. It'll be uh, I, I don't know. Somebody said something about paintball or something. That might be something we're doing this time. Nice. Nobody wants to shoot nice. the coach. So, <laughs> is that true, guys? Is that is that how it goes? Get pissed okay. at the coach. <laughs> Awesome. So that sounds like a lot of fun. So it's it, when you guys get back from camp, you're pretty like uh, I'm exhausted, or you, you know you're ready for more. Take it. No, uh, by the end, of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we get back to the hotel. It's a shower, and you know I'm ready to chill, go to bed. That that car ride home is the best thing ever until you have to get out of your car. And that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We tr- we try hanging out. we try hanging out after camp and I end up just falling asleep. So it's kind of <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Now my assumption is these games are going to be live stream via the NBHL, either Instagram or Facebook page. Eddie, is that is that yeah, so accurate the, or do we know yet? They have a couple <laughs> different streaming platforms, um, okay. and that will be. I think it's Twitch. I think Twitch, oh, Twitch. is the big one. Got about Twitch. Yep. Um, yep. So I think that's that'll be there, and um, w- what we'll do is ahead of time we'll be promoting it much more after this, um, and uh, we'll definitely have it out there. But I think Twitch is the big one, maybe YouTube, uh, a couple others. Okay, yeah, that that'll be that'll be easy. I'll be tuning in. Um, is there is there? Do you guys the U eighteen? Do you guys have your own Facebook page, Instagram page, or is it all through USA Ball Hockey? What's the best way to sort of connect with this team if if there's questions, etc. Uh, through I would say through USA Ball Hockey, we don't have a specific U eighteen page, but okay, yeah, okay. okay, yeah. Check out the USA Ball Hockey page; they keep you up to date. Um, they get a great Facebook page, Instagram. I mean, there's new stuff on new content every day. Um, so they do a great job. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'll be looking forward to the sixteen seventy. And then, is there any other camp, or is that it? Is that it? Is that the last tune up, or do you have one more? Oh, yep. we got more. I got more. Okay, tell me a little bit more about that. Then I'm I'm, I'm fascinated with this. So, I'll tell you the dates, and then they can fill you in on the rest. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll um we'll be there in March in uh, Sewell. Then we'll be in Pittsburgh in April. Um, okay. We'll probably do another, not as big of an event, but we'll do something with some uh, some local teams from the Pittsburgh NBHL League. Um, we do that at the RMU Center. Okay. Um, we spend two days there, and then we're off for May. May's a tough month with Mother's Day in the middle. You don't mess with Mother's mm-hmm. Day, so sure. Um, and then that as well. We'll be up here like three weeks before we leave. Uh, our most important camp is the one that's going to be in Tiverton. It's the same size rink. Um, it's where we'll install our final, you know, changes and game plans and finalize our playbook and and really get together as a team and do a lot of bonding, um, mm-hmm. you know, but th- they can fill you in on, on, on the good stuff. Okay. Feel free boys. Tell, fill me in on the good stuff. Cause I'm curious on all this stuff. Really I mean, my days, I guess. Camps. Usually we get there Friday nights. Um, most people go out to eat, go to dinner or something like that. Um, go to bed early Saturday morning. Like coach said, up at eight, you got to be out. Go you're late. No, you're running. <laughs> uh, we, we usually start off uh just get the tempo going coach likes to do some battle drills like he said earlier um just really get your mind going then we'll do some system and then at the end of it we're going to scrimmage make sure the systems are working uh get some scrimmages in maybe that's nbhl teams other teams u16s if they're there and then obviously he likes some suicides make sure we condition <laughs> down the ring constantly but yeah afterwards just back in the hotel shower go out to eat again, and then hang out at night, uh, fall asleep in the hotel lobby because you're dead tired. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And now, is Coach Eddie a screamer? Is he yelling at you guys all the time, or is he... Oh, he... <laughs> Not all the time. Not all the... You know, once in a while. <laughs> when I yell, you hear it. You hear it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I've never, you know, I've seen Eddie on the bench. I've never seen him really, you know, screaming at people. So practice might be different, right? Um, yeah. You know, so that's that's good to know. And yeah, uh, watch close enough, I guess. I guess I guess not. Clearly, <laughs> yeah. Probably we need to watch close enough. Um, and I do remember that triple overtime game though. 
uh, Mass. And that was Pittsburgh. Was that Pennsylvania? Yeah. Yeah. Pens- yeah. Okay. It was the dream team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to get pulled out of that game, though. I had to go uh, to a um, – my. I had that – on that trip, I, I went out there to see the tournament, but I also helped out with some of the scorekeeping, which was a fun experience. And my uh, my wife had gotten this um, – this, these tickets to a a car safari. I have to really pronounce those words for you guys, being from Mass, because I want to say car safari is what it was. And literally, the, these animals come right up to your vehicle, and they'll, you know, it's kind of scary with these big, you know, the big horned animals like ready to smash a window. So that's where I was while you guys were fighting out that game. I had to go back and rewatch it. But uh, so um, anyway, thanks for listening to these little stories. Uh, I. I wanted to ask you guys one more question again about the, the, the competition piece. I'm, I cannot tell you how impressed I am with the a level of commitment and all that stuff. And again, this is a credit to all of you is this idea that as an ice hockey player, I knew that you had to be in the gym a lot. You were squatting all the time, bench press. Uh, as a, I just a couple of years ago, I got to get back into it. I, I um, was running half marathons and I've been doing more distance run training. As you can tell, I haven't been doing that, but, and it's it's impressive the amount of time you guys put into this and the amount of uh, um, effort, which I just really appreciate for all, all of you guys. And that goes to your whole team. So I did want to ask you one one last question on your team camaraderie. Is there a player or players on your team that, you know, they just – when they walk in that locker room, they give you guys that sense of calmness – uh, maybe it's a sense of humor, a kind of like a, a something to get. Is there is there something that relaxes you guys as a team, like a pregame, things like this? Does that question um, make sense, by the way? Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. You know? I wouldn't say there's anything relaxing about it. It's more like something okay. – and they're going to crack a joke or you're just going to put each other. You know, uh, I mean, we gel that well that we could just mess, each, mess with each other all the time, uh, pick each other apart, and it's just all funny games. So you're immediately laughing in the locker room and everybody just feels like family and you just go from there. That's awesome. My, my big thing is music. I have to listen to music before a game. Um, I, I Music usually like gets me you know, into that, all right, it's time to go mood. And then uh, it's usually the coach that gets us fired up. So after I'm done listening to music, listen to the coach, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. And then like you said, uh, so I'm gonna crack jokes. I wish Drake was in here because <laughs> is he that, that guy? Yeah, he's that guy. That guy. We we <laughs> like to we like to uh, yeah. and it goes for coaches too. Like we like to joke around and and bust balls for lack of a better term, right? <laughs> it's quite all right, and it's great. Like I love when they mock me, and and I know they do it. I mean, my oldest son. He's in the military now, but when he was around the team, I know he loved to do like a mockery of me, right? And, and people <laughs> liked it, and, and I and I like it too. I like when people, you know, bust my balls, and we, we do it with each other, and it's all in good fun, and and uh, it, it it builds the uh, camaraderie, you know, the joking around and just being there for each other. And you guys need that for sure. It's a it's a stressful environment. I can only imagine what you're going through with that one. So. So it sounds like you got a lot of things coming up here in the future. This March 16th is only a little little more than a month away. So um, is there anything I can do to sort of promote that any for you guys? Or any, is there anything you guys need from me in that sense? Or Yeah, just um, share. Share, 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 share. <coughs> Excuse me. Happy to do that. Yeah, you, you, you see stuff, just share it for us. Um, it's all about the kids, right? That's why we're doing all this. Uh, we want to give them the greatest experience possible. Their parents are spending a lot of money. And someday when they're in a nursing home and they're old, they can tell their grandkids and their great grandkids about this. And, and that's why I do it that, and we want to win, obviously winning is, mm-hmm. is the one thing we want to do more than anything, but um, this is all about experience. This March 16th and 17th is a part of the journey. It's, it's, it's more than just a camp. It's another experience for them. Definitely, definitely a journey. And, and, I mean, this might be for you guys, for your players. I mean, is the goal that you'll someday get to be, you know, a Johnny Johnny Ruiz or a, a Andrew, you know, Hil- Hildo or a uh, a Bobby Hauser. Is that is that you guys what you got, want to progress to to get to that level where you're playing on the future national team? Is that is that sort of in your minds or do you just play it day by day? I mean, I try to take it day by day, but, yeah, that's the end goal to, like, get to that top level, play to those men's Masters tournaments at the end of it. 
Yeah, you well, trying to say we can never be as good as Johnny Ruiz? That, that was my goal too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I was I don't. trying. I was trying. I don't know. I got to get there. I got to have him on that podcast. I didn't. I, you know, I got to get him on here. He said at some point, but I mean, I hear his name all the time. So yeah, he's incredible. I don't know. He's a great player. So great player, yeah, and great guy. These guys. These guys are lucky to have him in New Jersey. He's a. He's a great player and a, and a guy I know these guys look up to. They love him. And Drake, oh, my God. <laughs> Drake was on here. He'd be dying right now. He's, I think he calls him Daddy Ruiz or something. He, he, <laughs> he's all about Johnny. <laughs> That's awesome. So, how, are you, how about you guys, uh, Dom and Dominic? No. Yeah, 100%. That's obviously the end goal. Uh my brother has been playing for a while, and that's his end goal, too. I mean, I, I've learned a lot from him. And, uh, he, yeah, he's playing at the best level right now. So not only to get to that main goal, but to uh, live up to him, like, the the way he plays. So Obviously, playing in, on the uh, men's team in the futures, it's cool. Uh, seems cool, but right now I'm just – we're. I think we could all agree I'm more focused on gold this summer before anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one like one step at a time. Absolutely, I, I agree with you guys. I got I sometimes even to this day I get lost in my future plans. It's you know I got to remember to remind myself to stay in the moment. So, um, well, I I I feel like I've learned a lot about you guys. You guys are tremendous people. Just so you know, I I've I've really enjoyed talking to people that are driven, motivated. Um, and like I said, I'll be we'll be following you from across the mass for sure. And watching as much as we can but any last messages from you guys any any other things you wanted to to share thanks for having us yeah, really thank appreciate you. It. yeah, yeah thank you my pleasure. means a lot my my pleasure my pleasure anytime <laughs> maybe we can do something again before you guys head out uh for yeah. sure 100 yeah. percent. maybe we can, we can celebrate this. live on your podcast yes, with yeah. a gold medal with a gold medal that was that's what i'm hoping yeah eddie i i, I did this is the question i forget the team self constructed, is it, is it pretty equal amount where these kids, where these guys are coming from as far as across the country, or is it a predominantly one area where you feel like you're getting the best players? Uh, I that think ball hockey is predominantly a Northeast thing. Um, it's I shouldn't say predominant. The best players definitely right now live in the Northeast. Um, and that encompasses Pittsburgh, New Jersey, um, Massachusetts. I would say out of those three spots, the three big spots, it's pretty equal. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's like eight, seven, and six. So it's you know eight, seven, and seven. It's it's really close. Um, and, and we we went outside and we looked at some NDHL tape of some young guys from California, from uh, North Carolina. We looked, but these guys, you know, I just top notch that we have and they happen to be in this, these areas where the game is biggest but yeah it's pretty pretty equal among the three meccas of ball hockey mm -hmm. sure sure absolutely yeah i'm always curious i mean um you know i'm like i said i'm still learning a lot the nbhl has provided me to look at a lot of different <laughs> yeah, players NHL's and, great what you know, the nbhl and usa ball hockey is great i mean there's so many like there's like seven world organizations now but um, I think we're getting to a point now where the ISBHF and USA Ball Hockey is really, in particular, USA Ball Hockey is really taking it to another level. Um, there's other USA programs, and they, they try to do their best, but USA Ball Hockey is where it's at right now. Their, their U16 team just went this weekend um, to the Super Bowl bye week tournament. Is that what it is still? Yeah, Super Bowl bye week um, I mean, I mean, they and they beat a team two years older than them, right? A I national team that, two actually. years older than them. That's incredible, right? US, USA ball hockey's really done a great job of getting the best talent together and and training them. Absolutely, absolutely. That, I mean, that's that's one of the things. I mean, uh, you know, probably my question for the boys here is is like playing in the NBHL. I mean, you guys are seventeen, eighteen years old, right? Then there's the six teams and below. You know, you're playing against basically you're playing against grown men. You know, so how do you compete with those grown men at such a, such a young age? I mean, that's what makes ball hockey so unique. But I don't know if you guys have an answer for that. If it if there's any responses to that question, Physi so. physicality. That's all it Physi is. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's oh, uh, so much. Yeah, yeah, it's it's when you get up to the higher stages, that's what separates you from others. It's 
your physical play. Yeah, that's the hardest part about playing NBHL teams is just physically, they're so much bigger than us, which mm -hmm. that you got to try to match that or find a way around that using your speed to get around the bigger physical guys. Yeah, I agree. And uh, obviously, the older we get, it's a quicker game at the more higher levels. So that's just getting us more prepared for the summer as well, playing against the older guys. So fast. For sure. So and with you guys, are you guys playing on the tourna tournament teams? Like, do you guys play with, forgive me, the gods, Arsenal? Are you guys at that level right now? Or do you play for other club teams? Because, forgive me, I don't know that that area that well. So, I've played uh, I've played one tournament with the gods. Uh, I've played about – they had a B team for a little bit. This was okay. probably – this was last year. We were called the Guardian Angels. And I think okay, I've I played – yeah. Yeah, I think I played three tournaments with them, but uh, we were over in uh, we were over in uh, Boston actually, and uh, that's my first tournament I got to play with them, and it was incredible. So, was that the outdoor championship up here? That, yeah, that was the outdoor. Yeah, yeah. Did did those rinks feel smaller than than where you were at home? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, for sure. it feels it feels smaller, but like I said, I mean, your the play level stays the same. It's you know, yeah, sure. yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I wasn't sure how that guy because at some point you guys will be playing for these these elite teams at that at that level. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, the outdoor. I mean, I, I uh, Eddie, we we can tell you we being in New England, the weather is just miserable at times <laughs> uh, with outdoor rinks. But uh, fortunately, you know, um, we haven't really. This was our first year with the rink, so we we actually actually do. I still run pickup for some of our adults right now. That's still still out there. It's February and. I had to play goal the other day, Eddie. That was not fun. I hate no, that. No. But uh, I'm a no, never you. mind. No, uh, you know. So anyway, um, all right. So March 16th, 17th live stream against the NBHL big boys. That should be that's really exciting. And then what is the tournament date in Slovakia? Do you know that yet? Uh, July fourth through the seventh, I believe. July fourth through the seventh. All right. So. Um, again, guys, thanks so much for doing this. This is great. I uh, I look forward to. Watch you guys progress. Uh, I'll be sending words of encouragement to er uh, to Eddie, and um, to wrap up. <laughs> sorry to do this, but does anyone want to do an impression of Eddie? <laughs> 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 or do we need Drake for that? That I don't know. So yeah, I'll we do. need Drake for that. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you what. We'll we'll have Drake do it and send you the video. All right. <laughs> okay, you so, yeah, I, sounds I sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> Otherwise, um, again, thank you guys. So for those of you that are watching this podcast, Street Hockey Life, you know, take a look at USA Ball Hockey. Uh, get to know these guys. I mean, this is a special group. This is, I mean, just by talking to them, I'm, I'm amazed by their maturity and wish them the best. So um, I'm going to share their information as we go. And, uh, again, one last time, thank you guys. It's been a pleasure. And you, I Paul. wish you the, my pleasure. We'll wish you the best uh, in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you so All right. much. My pleasure. Take care, everybody. See ya. Weekend. Stop.